Hi there, it's Celia. Today, I'm gonna to be painting three easy watercolor pieces, abstract flowers, a landscape scene, and some loose butterflies. I'll show you each step of the process so you can pick one or all three and follow along with me. Or just relax and watch some art. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's quickly cover the materials to make sure you have everything you need for success. Don't worry, it's only a couple things. First and foremost, watercolor paper. Please do not use computer paper. Don't use a notebook or a canvas either. You will need dedicated watercolor paper because it's specifically designed to absorb water and not become a wrinkly mess. You don't need anything fancy. I usually prefer at least 140 pounds, um, but whatever you have will work. Second, have a watercolor brush at the ready. It's helpful if you have a variety of sizes, such as here, but whatever you have will work, especially as this is designed to hold and spread water. This is a size eight. Oh. This is a size eight round brush from Princeton's Neptune collection. Third, you'll need watercolor paints, such as here, and something to mix them in. You can use the dishes here or a separate dish, such as like this. Fourth, you'll need something for your water. I use an old peanut butter glass jar for mine since I love to reuse things. So you can use really whatever you have on hand. A pencil and eraser if you'd like to sketch out your design before painting. And last is a little paper towel, t-shirt, just anything to dry your brush off on. Okay, that's it. Materials assembled, let's make art. For this first painting, we're gonna be filling our page with Art Deco abstract flowers. If you'd like, you can sketch them out on paper first, just so you can get a general idea of where you want your shapes to be. While you're laying out your page, I would recommend um, to start thinking about the colors that you'd like to use for this piece. For example, reds, pinks, and yellows usually look really good together, but you can go crazy and go with blue, purple, black, you know? Whatever matches your decor, whatever you're feeling like today. But if you would like a cohesive look, I would recommend to sticking to the same side of the color wheel. So for example, yellows, red tones, and then maybe like blues, greens, and whatnot, because that really makes things look pulled together without having to do a lot of thinking about what colors exactly you want where. And here is what the finished sketch looks like. Let's go color it. First, I would recommend taking an eraser and brushing off the excess graphite. Just so you can still lightly see where you put your pencil down, but then it's not overpowering over the layers of watercolor and you can see a lot of the graphite. Now that we have our sketches ready to go, let's go fill our water and get to painting. So I think for this piece, I'm gonna do reds and purples and then with the stems being green. But again, feel free to choose whatever colors you'd like. Right now, I'm just mixing my colors. This purple color is a little bit red tinted. So I'm gonna mix another purple and add a little bit of blue to it to get a little bit of a cooler, more like a true purple shade, true violet. So I'm just grabbing my blue and adding it straight into the bowl. And look how nice that shade is. I think I want this big flower to be a purple on the outsides with red in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a wet on wet technique for this. So what I'm gonna do is first clean off my brush. This is where the paper towel or just like a little towel is handy to really make sure that your brush gets clean. There we go. And then I'm just gonna go ahead from the corners and just put some plain water on the inside of my petal. And again, you don't have to be super careful about where you put it. Obviously it's just anywhere inside the lines is fine, but you'll be able to go ahead and erase the lines after you put the colors already on. So don't worry too much about sticking inside the lines here. And I'm waiting for this to dry just a little bit so it's not extremely wet before I add my colors. 
Let me go ahead and start with the purple. As you can see that really starts spreading as soon as I put it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it down to get a nice gradient. And then from this side, I'm not even gonna clean off my brush too much. I'm gonna do the little purpley pink tone here and drag this upward. Again, you can mix them whatever feels best for you. For this one, I'll do the little brighter red in the middle. And you can see the paint has dried actually a little bit here, so it doesn't spread quite as much, which is okay. And I really like how deep red this is here. I'm actually gonna add a little bit down here while it's still wet. And there's the first one. Let's wait for it to dry. And we'll move on to the next. I think for this one, I think I'd like to keep that majority red. So I am just gonna grab the red straight from the pot. It's already mixed with water, so it's not it's not super, super dry. It's not super saturated. But we're gonna just go ahead and fill in those little leaves without putting water on them first. This is called the wet on dry technique. Whereas this is wet on wet since you're putting wet paint onto wet paper. And you can see here, I have globs of red. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push them gently toward the bottom of the base. Since I like the look of the deeper shadowy base. All right, and let's wait for that to dry. In the meantime, let's go wash our waters because if your color palette was anything like mine, your water probably looks a little bit reddish. <laughs> Maybe a little pink flavor, it's fine. Um, I'm gonna go clean this out, get some fresh water and mix my green. Be right back. All right, now for this last part, let's do the stems and the leaves. So I'm just gonna mix this bright green color. You can use whatever you have, again, pretty flexible. I think I'm just gonna use that straight out of the pot. I like how it looks and I love how it's like a little bit more limey because I don't want a really like a deep shade of green. This is still a little bit wet, but but getting, getting close enough where I can actually put my hand on it. So here I'm really just using the tip of the brush to get a nice fine angle. And again, this is a wet on dry technique. We'll widen out for the stem and then bring it back in for the bottom. Again, make sure your painting is fully dry before you actually put your hand on it. I have definitely made that mistake a time or two. So here's how we are looking with all the green leaves finished and the whole paper is now dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start erasing my pencil lines. It might fade a little bit of the watercolor, but it really shouldn't be too bad. And you get the idea. Just keep erasing until all the pencil is gone, which it really does make it look quite a bit nicer and more cleaned up. And there you have it. That's the piece. Hope you enjoyed making it. On to the next one. This next painting will require some patience, mostly for the wait time to dry between layers. Otherwise, I think it's very effective and simple and easy. Let's do it. For it, you'll need your blank watercolor paper, and this is optional, but some blue painter's tape. I mean, it doesn't have to be blue, uh, just something to keep the edges of your paper clean. So I already have the first one taped off, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mark the edges of the paper with the blue painter's tape. I really like this for more abstract pieces, kind of frames it really nicely. But again, this is completely optional. You can just go to the edge of the paper or however far you want. That sound is always so satisfying. So first I'm gonna draw a horizon line. This is completely optional as well, but it's kind of nice to have. That's just about half and half on each side. Next, I'm gonna mix my colors. If you have a bigger brush, I would suggest using it for this one, but if not, the medium-sized brush will do just fine. 
And for my colors, I think I'm gonna do blues, grays, and maybe with a little bit of orange as a complementary color. Maybe like a yellowy orange. So the concept of this painting as an abstract landscape, that's kind of a reflection of itself. So you can just kind of put this wherever you'd like and we'll be layering colors on top of this. So don't worry if it's not exactly how you want. And maybe just dabbing a little bit of oranges right there, right there, right there as well. All right, perfect. Now the waiting game begins. Now start thinking about your other colors and wait for this one to dry because we'll be painting right on top of it and we want this to be fully, fully dry before we put any other colors on top. Otherwise it was just gonna blend together, which we do not want. So I'm gonna keep these colors here and start mixing my blues. I don't want a super, super bright blue. Maybe just like a shade of Payne's gray to mix it with. But again, you can do whatever colors you want. I'm gonna start this all the way here and make this one a little bit more ridgy. Just a little bit of overlap and then bring it down here. And if you'd like, you can bring this all the way down to get a little bit more layers. Make sure every little corner is done. Perfect. Wait for this one to dry as well. All right, since that is almost completely dry, I'm gonna go ahead and mix my darker bluish gray. And for this one, I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit closer to the horizon line and maybe stretch upward of here. All right, perfect, let's wait for this to dry and we'll keep on making our layers. All right, now that that layer is fully dry, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a darker gray. I'm gonna take this straight from the jar with a wet brush so just straight into it because I want this to be really, really deep. Yes, there we go. Let's get a little bit more. All right, so for this last layer, I think I'm gonna touch up a little bit of the blues. I think I want a little bit more of a prominent shape here to match more of what is going on here. And then it's kind of fill in some of the gaps to really strengthen that color. So I'm just gonna take that blue straight from the pan, mix it around just a little bit, and then just add a little bit behind there. I'm gonna add some straight from the pan just to add a little bit more pop. I like that quite a bit more. I'm gonna just take a little bit from here just so it's not quite as strong, so it matches the other blue tones that we have. I'm gonna take this little bit of orange that I saved from before and do the same thing down here. Just kinda of glob it on there and just add a little bit of pop. So the last step is to wait for it all to dry and then untape it and then we have the finished product. I think overall it, it was only maybe 10 minutes of actual painting time. The longest bit was, as, as I expected, is just waiting for the layers to dry. And honestly, I could have given it a little bit more because I did blend just a little bit more than I would have liked. Um, but I think it turned out pretty cool. I think it's an interesting effect. I also think this would be cool to do on two pieces of paper. To do, a, I believe it's called a diptych, just basically like splitting this in half this way and then having these two be separate pieces of art. And there we have it. Let's untape. A little messy, but it's all good. And there we have it. Don't mind the untaping marks. Um, <laughs> hopefully you guys can't see that, but the tape took off a little bit more than I was hoping for little bit more of the paper. So if you have thicker paper, that's best. If not, it is what it is. It'll be in a frame anyway, so it'll be just fine. But here it is, a little watercolor abstract landscape. Now for this last piece, we're really gonna test the fluidity and looseness of the watercolor. I think it'll be a fun one. Let's do it. 
So for this one, we're gonna start with the darkest color, which is gonna be a really dark purple. So I'm gonna mix this a brighter purple with some blue. And as you probably saw, I'm back to the medium sized brush. All right, so what we're gonna do is draw a little head. It does not need to be perfect. And then we're gonna attach the body. I'm gonna dip straight into the Payne's Gray and add a little darker color there. And if you want to add little dots around it, that is great as well. So we're going for a really nice, loose, kind of fun um, splatter painty technique. And give that a couple moments to dry. And then in the meantime, we'll start on the second butterfly. Just making them a little bit bigger since I want these to be nice big butterflies that fill up most of the page. All right, now that we got the bodies down and almost fully dry, let's go ahead and start on the wings. So I'm gonna take my little dark purple mixture and start making the wing. So this is the shadow of the wing. We get a little more paint on there. Might just need to mix some more. So I'm just making short little strokes and then I'm gonna add my greens and blues. I'm just gonna st straight from the pan. And then just kind of add the colors wherever you'd like in the general wing shape. I want nice big wings. So I'm gonna go straight from the pan to add those colors. So wow, that's quite bright. Dragging a little bit of that blue down into the wing. And here, you can grab some of that blue and just kind of flick it out. Or whatever color you use for the edges. I'm gonna do the same with the green. And you can even just add little dots or you can just add little drops of water and it will spread out in a nice loose manner once it dries. So that's the first wing. We're gonna add the second wing in here behind. In a similar technique, I'm just gonna wait for this first one to dry. And then I'll start on the second butterfly. For this one, I think I'm gonna do, do some yellows and reds. So I'm just grabbing straight from the pot and then getting a nice wide color. Just gonna go straight in with the orange there. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and make the second wing on the side. I'm gonna leave this nice and watery so we kind of get a nice loose effect. It's almost a little too much water, but it's okay. We'll drag it down on, and onto the rest of the page. I'm gonna add just a little scotch of that red color to kind of tie it together here while it's still drying. And again, we can do the same thing here in getting the paint splatters. Actually grab from here if you'd like and just go ahead. Sometimes it's also good to just grab some paint and just kind of drop it on there with a little bit of force. <laughs> Doesn't really matter where they land, so that's kind of the fun part of it. All right, let's go ahead and wait for those to dry and then we'll start on our second wings as soon as these are nice and dry. All right, now that we're mostly dry here and still a little bit wet here, I'm gonna start working on the second wing up here. So we're gonna go with a little bit of a deeper of a shadow here and then extend it outward. I'm gonna go back to my purpley blue color. Get the general shape. Okay. 
I'm gonna go back through with a smaller brush and kind of really refine the details here so I'm not too worried about anything that's going on. All right, very nice. Let's add a little bit of blue to the underside. Now while that one's drying, let's go ahead and work on the wing of this, this bottom butterfly. I'm gonna start with a little orange color here and extend outward. This one's definitely the most fun. <laughs> Let's go ahead and wait for that to dry. As always, I'm repeating myself, but it really is necessary in this case. And I'm gonna go in with my smaller brush or you can use the same brush and just use the fine line. Um, just make sure this is completely dry and we'll go in with a little bit more details. So for here, I'm gonna be trying to be careful because a lot of these water droplets still haven't dried yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and just dip straight into the Payne's gray with the small brush and try to position my hand so I'm not dropping these water droplets everywhere. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a pretty dry brush and kind of define some of the features of this butterfly. It's here along the back, maybe a little bit on the head. Again, I'm gonna try to keep it loose. It doesn't need to be exact, but just kind of getting a little bit more dimension to this butterfly. And I'm gonna try to keep this very, very dry because I don't want these lines to spread very far. So as you can see, it's taking me multiple tries to get the lines down. I'm really making sure to dry off my brush before going back in. And then let's get this farther wing. I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of shadows here and spread this out. Just so, not, just so it's not quite as harsh. Try to use a little bit of that leftover purple as well. As you can see that it's quite heavy, so I'm just gonna dab it up and extend outward. And for the stripes on this one, since a gray would be much too harsh, I'm gonna use this dark red color be very, very gentle with it. Again, it's personal preference if you if you even want to put these lines in. And whatever is too harsh, I just blend out. Get a nice line and for the final shot we'll add some little tiny legs with a very very dry brush maybe a little antennas I just want it super super light we'll wait for the final little droplets to dry and that will be the finished piece and there you guys have it Three easy art ideas you can do in under an hour that you can hang up or give to someone else. If you do decide to attempt any of these, please do let me know. I would really love to see how these turned out. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.